Hello, today we're going to be covering a senior financial analyst Excel test where we are required to build out a three statement model over a five year period. The objective of this case is to build out the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement from 2025 to 2029 using the assumptions provided below. Now, before we go over the assumptions, let's quickly take a look at the data that we have. So we have the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow all the way up to 2024 and we have to forecast from 2025 to 2029. And we are also provided the capital expenditure schedule all the way to 2024, and we will most likely use this to forecast out our depreciation expense and long-term assets. Now that we're aware of the data that we have, we can begin solving this case. In all statement models, I highly recommend for you to start with the income statement, as it is the easiest to forecast out without relying on the results of the other two statements. After finishing the income statement, you would then move on to the balance sheet, except for cash and cash equivalents, and then you would build out the cash flow statement, and then finalize the balance sheet by populating cash from the cash flow statement. So the order should always be income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and then back to balance sheet. So let's begin building out the income statement. Let's go back to the instructions and review our assumptions. So we have service revenue growth rate. Cost of goods sold is driven by sales revenue. Salaries and wages are expected to increase 50% annually. Professional fees increase 20% annually. Advertising cost grows 10%. And then depreciation and amortization is based on the capital expenditure schedule. There's also one more point that for all the items not mentioned, create general assumptions on growth. So we'll just apply a general growth rate either based on inflation or just historical growth rates. So let's now begin forecasting. Every time you're building out a forecast model, it is best practice to write down your assumptions in a different cell. So for example, I know that I'm going to grow service revenue by 20%. Rather than putting the 20% in the formula here, it is better to separately write the 20% in a separate cell so that people can review your assumptions more easily. I'm going to call this column assumptions, copy this formatting, and then for service revenue, I'm going to grow this by 20% every year. Sales revenue and sponsorship revenue were not mentioned in the assumptions, so we just have to apply a general growth rate. And there are various different ways that you could do this. To keep it simple, I'm going to create another section at the bottom, and I'm going to call this historicals. And I'm just gonna separately calculate the year over year growth rate for these two items. So let's just divide this minus one. And then let's just average the historical growth rates and apply them consistently year over year. So I would grow sales revenue by the average year over year growth rate based on historicals. Now you can definitely look more into the trends for this purpose. For example, we can see that for sales revenue, their year over year growth rate has actually been increasing. So rather than an average 9% growth rate, we might even expect about 12, 13, 14, and for the growth rate to continuously grow over the years. However, for this case, we'll just keep it simple and just use the historical average growth rate. And for cost of goods sold, the assumptions mentioned that it is driven from sales revenue. And we're going to assess the margin based on sales revenue. So we can see that on average, we generate about 53% of cost of goods sold of the sales revenue that we generate. So let's, again, use the historical average. And this time, we're going to calculate cost of goods sold based on the sales revenue that we projected. And then gross profit would just be total revenue minus total cost of goods sold. And now for operational expenses, the salaries and wages are expected to increase 15% annually. So let's write down this assumption here and just copy the formula from service revenue to grow salaries and wages by 15%. The other operational expense is professional fees, which grows by 20%. So it would be row 22 and let's copy this formula. And then the last operational expense they specified is advertising cost. So let's apply a 10% growth rate over here. 
And then for software cost, we're going to do the same thing that we did with revenue. So software cost, and we're just going to calculate the year over year growth rate on software cost. So we expect software cost to grow about 7.5% per year. And then for GNA cost, same thing as software expense. And then our EBITDA would be gross profit minus operational expense. Now below EBITDA, we have two more items. We have depreciation and net interest. We know that for depreciation, we have to use the capital expenditure schedule. However, for net interest, they haven't provided us any information. So we can just use the historical average for this one as well. So we expect net interest revenue to grow by 5.66% every year. Now depreciation and amortization, let's quickly take a look at the capital expenditure schedule. We are provided the equipment ID, purchase price, amortization method, the duration of months that it's amortized for, and then the purchase date. It looks like this case has already set out a monthly depreciation schedule for us, but it's all hard-coded. So we just have to extend this using a formula from December 2024 all the way to December 2029. So let's just manually extend this all the way to December 2029. Now, setting up this schedule is not too difficult. I'm going to add two more columns and one column, I'm just gonna call this monthly amount. And this should reflect the monthly depreciation amount reflected in the schedule. And the way we're going to calculate this is simply purchase price divided by amortization period. And you'll notice that the amounts perfectly match the amounts within the schedule that was set up until 2024. And we also have to determine when the depreciation ends. So we'll just call this end date. And we can see that within this depreciation schedule, this company actually begins depreciation within the month that the equipment is purchased. For example, we can see that this was purchased in January 2019 and we amortized the full amount of 11,000 in 2019. So to get the end date, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the end of month function. The start date will be the purchase price. And then for the months, we're going to subtract one because we begin amortization within the month that it was purchased, but the end of month function always starts counting after the first month. So we're just gonna subtract one so it reflects how the company is currently depreciating their equipment. For example, this first one, we expect it to end in April 30th, 2021. And based on the schedule, that is when it ended. So now let's set up a formula to calculate the monthly depreciation. Let's first freeze this. And then in our formula, what we're gonna do is if and the period is greater or equal to the purchase date, and the period is less than or equal to the end date, then we want to return the monthly amount, otherwise a zero. It's as simple as that. And then copy this all the way to 2029. And we now have our schedule for each month. So what we're gonna do here is also insert two more rows and then just calculate the total of our depreciation for each month. And to make it simpler, I'm also going to use a year function to return the year of each period so that when I consolidate this, it's easier for me. And now for the income statement, all I have to do is sum ifs the total amounts per month based on the year. And we now have our depreciation expense. And then net income is going to be the EBITDA minus non-operational expenses. And we now have our income statement forecast.